Hey, beautiful souls, beautiful sunshine here with the All Holistic Killer, a.k.a. Sonya B. I am back with another prophetic message that I received this morning. Um, forgive me, y'all. I'm sitting out in the parking lot. I just got finished dropping my uh, <laughs> my dog off um, so that uh, she can go get groomed or whatever. But um, I figured I'd just go ahead and make this video while I'm out and about so I don't have to do it while I'm at home. And forgive me. I know my head wrap looks bigger than usual. <laughs> I got a towel up on underneath here because I'm still washing my hair from yesterday. Um, anyway, so with all that being said, um, I just want to say that if you're new to my channel, I just want to say welcome. And for those of you who are turning back, I want to say welcome back. Keep in mind that these energies could be happening right now for you, could be happening uh, a few days out for you, or it could be happening um, within a week or two from now. Um, just depends on your location on the planet. Keep that in mind as well, too. For those of you who do not know, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm just trying to watch my surroundings at the same time while I'm out here sitting, um, making this video. Um, but for those of you who do not know, I'm a Reiki master teacher. I am also a Reiki practitioner. I am also an intuitive clairvoyant Hoyoka empath who receives divine prophetic dream messages, also receive intuitive messages, as well as intuitive messages through music as well, too. So anyway, um, and I am here during this time to be able to help... Um, uh, people on their spiritual journeys and I translate messages from the spiritual world into this uh, physical world to help assist you guys on your um, your um, spiritual journey or your soul's journey should I say either or <laughs> you know it doesn't matter anyway because if the message is resonating whether it's your soul journey or whether it's your spiritual journey it doesn't matter anyway so with all that being said let me get into the message so the message that came through this morning was, I know I did a message yesterday that was talking about 888, which is represents abundance. And, you know, God was uh, wanting to bless some people. So what I saw this morning was God was revealing itself. And I was like, oh, God, OK, that was like that was very interesting how you showed that to me. So that the dreams of how they're coming through is it has been a little bit more interesting, <laughs> should I say. Um, but anyway, with all that being said, uh, take it how it resonates, because this could either be happening to you or it could be happening to somebody close to you, a co-worker, a boss, family member, um, a spouse, you know, take your children, take it how it resonates. So just keep that in mind as well, too. But anyway, uh, so if it's not happening to you, it's happening to somebody that's around you. Keep that in mind as well, too. Anyway, so with all that being said, let me get right into the message. So the message that I received this morning was, it was, um, it came in a form of, it made it seem like I myself and my dog, as well as, it felt like a child of mine, but I felt like I was a child myself, was sitting in the back seat of a like antique type car. Um, I can't even really describe the car to you. Anyway, so with all that being said, um, it came in a form as if it was an antique car. And it was like my parents was up in the front seat of the car. They was driving the car. And remember, a car uses a representation of whoever's driving the car. They're driving that direction of which where they wanted to head it in. So what had happened was I felt like we was on a road trip, but we was traveling for some time. It felt like it just kind of took forever to get there in a sense. So for some of you, I feel like what Spirit is saying to me, thank you, Spirit, uh, is it's been a long, hard journey. And it's took some of you forever to kind of reach this point, should I say. Um, for such as times as now that you're actually kind of coming up on that point or about to reach that point so anyway so it took us a minute to get to our location and wherever it was that we was trying to go and it just so happened that um, when we finally arrived there and once we got there I was like I kind of felt like that was a long trip so anyway but once we got there it was kind of like we was going to visit relatives at how it came in a form of like it was this building and the way it was kind of the building it wasn't a very big building but it kind of reminds me of like a rave type building i guess like a little small space where they have like little raves or whatever i don't even know what a rave is because i never attended one but anyway but just from seeing it what it looked like on the movies uh just i guess a small little condemned spaces i guess whether it's condemned or just a little small space or whatever um was just being used for the rave because the building looked like on the inside like it was kind of old looking so as soon as we walked into the building it's almost like it was just myself so it's like i didn't even see my parents anymore but i walked into the building so it was more so like uh i was a it was almost like I was exploring what was there in the building. So when I walked in, I noticed it was kind of dark in there. Uh, it just seemed like it was very dark, you know, like how I guess like people who have like those, I guess, I mean, just imagine a rave party being dark because they need to have like, if you think the rave parties that are dark and they have like the little glow lights, 
imagine a rave party with glow lights so you need it to be as dark as possible so that way you can really see the glow lights when they glow up light up you know whether they're on your arm whether they're on your head or whether you're wearing them around your waist or whatever glow lights that you have whether you got it wrapped around your waist you want to be able to see the light so the building was very dark but it was lit up inside with uh, white light so I could see. And it was almost like a security guy when I walked in there, I saw like a security guy was just like standing down like at the bottom of the steps. And it's almost like he was kind of keeping an eye on the people that was there. So it wasn't really crowded and it wasn't anybody partying there, but it was very interesting once I went in and went down. So remember, I walked into the building. As soon as I walked in, it went, the stairs went down. So I did a message on um, some time ago when it was pertaining to walking downstairs. Usually walking downstairs is usually a representation of kind of like going into a deep, dark, place that sometimes most people don't usually want to go because i think i did i know i think i did a message on this one it was when i talked about um it seemed like it came in a form as if my daughter was in a place like she was talking to me i was outside and she was standing down at the stairwell like uh a, a, like a storm door you know how they open up the, the, the doors to a storm door but it was like some stairs that lead it down to like a basement like but it wasn't a house like but anyway uh imagine like a uh uh some sort of temple like leading having stairs to go down anyway so it came in a form as I'm going back to the other dream right now so when my daughter was standing there it came in a form as if she didn't really want to be there but she had to be there meaning she had to go down to that deep dark place and I was standing outside because I had already did the necessary healing work that you know needed to be done so the message that came through in that particular dream was you know whatever it was that you didn't want to happen it was going to happen so if you if you say you didn't want something to happen, it was going to end up happening. So that was that dream at that point in time. But these stairs are representations of visiting the subconscious mind. So what it is, thank you, Spirit. What it is, is God's soul Spirit is bringing to my attention that, you know, sometimes there, there are going to be these times where you're going to have like these little small spats or spare of the moments like here and there. that The subconscious mind is going to come up, keep coming up for healing like it's going to be coming in little spurts here and there a little bit here a little bit there so it's not too much and it's not too overwhelming to the point that it can cause somebody to be like oh my god like you know insane or whatever so yes we're all kind of going through this journey and some of us have been through this and some of us are going through it not necessarily as much as others because some of us have already done the healing work but with that being said uh they're going to come in little spurts of you know needing to heal this needing to heal that you know to the point that you you know are going to find yourself eventually completely healed um anyway uh so with that being said so i walked in the stairs walked down the stairs again it was a dark room and the security guard was standing down like up against the wall down at the bottom of the stairs and then as i walked in there i kind of looked around and then i saw people here and there on this one side of the room I saw like, I got the feeling like they were relatives, like they were related to me in some sort of form. And one guy was standing like on the stairs after I had came off the stairs and I was just walking and looking around. He was looking at me like, like he was intrigued, like, like he was just looking like, and I'm like, well, okay, why is he staring in so much? But anyway, but then he looked and he said, hey, I'm your, he said, I'm your cousin. And I said, oh, okay. And then he sh put his hand out and he, sh and he wanted to shake my hand. And, um, and uh so with that being said uh so he introduced himself as his as my cousin in a sense so anyway with that being said then it got to a point of uh i saw on that side of the room was probably like three people on that side of the room so and then uh there was a lady who was also kind of like a cousin in a sense and she was kind of showing me around uh she went over into another room that was just off to the sides of the stairs and she opened up the door and then as soon as i walked in there was like a a little cot right there by the doorway and i was like hey i said is that my cousin such and such and then i looked and then he said i said you look like my cousin such and such i don't want to say his name but <laughs> it has nothing to do with him but it's just it was just how god was just delivering the message so i said you like my cousin such and such and he was like no 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 i'm not him i'm not him i said and he said my name is such and such and i said but you really look like my cousin such and such and he was like no so he was really in denial but then i asked the lady i said he looks like my cousin such and such is that him and she said yeah that's him <laughs> so with that being said it's almost like 
he was in denial. He didn't want to admit, admit the truth, but let me keep moving because I'm explaining to you in a minute. He was in denial. He didn't want to uh, accept the truth for what it was, but he didn't. Uh, he didn't want to be his true authentic self and in, in other words like you know so he didn't want me to know i guess that he was there you know in this dark place or whatever so uh he's got he disguised himself as someone else so anyway so jeff saw to the side of him i saw like a little baby sitting in like a little high chair and i'm like i was like oh the little baby is so cute so i went to pick the baby up the baby started crying and i knew to myself even in his dream i was like babies don't cry when i pick them up babies usually are happy when i pick them up or even when i'm talking to them so even in this dream, I was aware in my reality life that babies usually smile when they see me. And I'm thinking, why is this baby crying? <laughs> so I put the baby right back down in the chair and left her alone and kept her moving. And then the lady who was in charge of my cousin was supposed to, supposed to be, and I don't even know who she was because she didn't look familiar. But anyway... Uh, she's supposed to be my cousin though but this lady was in charge of keeping track of everybody who was in the building so she was sitting in like this little single chair you know with the armrest that sits up this high one of them little single chairs um away from the couch or whatever she was sitting in one of those like she had just done her rounds uh like she had done her rounds there taking care of everybody making sure that they were good and so on and so on so the dream switched scenes at that point and then at this point it's like myself we were outside at this point. So my parents were outside at this point as well too. So myself, my parents, and her was outside. This time we were standing by the water and I saw her rowing away in a boat. And I was like, okay, where's she going? I was like, she leaving the people? <laughs> but it, it, that's kind of, we was just watching her row away. She was just rolling away in the boat. So I was like, okay. So anyway, I woke up and I was like, okay, Lord, what does this dream mean? Because at first I was just like, is this some relatives? And then it, and it wasn't until my daughter did something in the kitchen. She was doing this dance and it just reminded me. I said, like, oh, okay. So, you know, as sometimes things happen that it triggers you and allows you to remember um, just like certain symbols or symbolisms that you may see, symbols and stuff like that. It triggers something in your subconscious memory that allows you to remember certain things. So it wasn't until she did this dance that I was actually able to fully understand the dream. So, but anyway, let me explain to you. Walking inside the building, it was dark. That is representation of the subconscious mind. So some of us have been hiding or some of you guys have been hiding stuff way deep down in your subconscious mind. And remember, I did the message yesterday where God saw a spirit said that he wants to bless you. But um, will you do what he asked you to do, in other words? So he wants you to release he wants you to release that stuff that is way deep down in that subconscious mind because it's about to come up. So I say all that to say, when I went down there, the security guard was there to keep the people protected. And Lena, I remind you, it was probably like every bit of what? Three, four, five, maybe like six people there at the most. And not including myself as well as my parents, you know, as we arrived, but the people who were there in the building. And um, remember, the subconscious mind is usually a dark place that a lot of people do not want to visit. That's the area that people will shun and shy from, you know, because they know that there's stuff down there that they don't want to deal with. So they do stuff like allow work or allow uh, substance abuse, you know, whether alcohol, sex, or, you know, some type of drug addictions. Those are the things that they suppress and try to hold down into that place because they don't want to remember those things that really, that is allowing them to, um, they don't want to remember those things that kind of made them feel a certain type of way, should I say. So, you know, with that being said, it's almost like a, a coping mechanism, in other words. Thank you, Spirit. It's almost like a coping mechanism, you know. Um, so when we do stuff like try to keep ourselves busy or we try to, uh, when we feel the need to always be around somebody else or because they make us feel a certain type of way because we don't want to sit in silence, you know, that too is also like a coping mechanism, you know, because we don't want to face what is really down in that cellar, uh, you know, that is, uh, that needs to be healed in other words. So anyway, the security guard was there to keep everybody safe. So if you think about it, we have all done something in our point in life that allows us to keep ourselves safe. And I can say like myself too, like myself, um, prime example, because I had to heal some things too. 
you know, I would keep myself safe by not really expressing my true feelings and emotion. Like if, if I was hurt by something, I wouldn't even allow people to know that I was even bothered by it, in other words. You know, so I say all that to say I had to learn to be, and it wasn't that I didn't want to be honest. It was just a coping mechanism that I saw because I was so honest for so long. And I saw that how being in this world, it people wasn't like how I was. In other words, because I was honest and I knew I had integrity. And because I come from a loving place and it's like I see everybody else, not saying that they didn't come from a loving place, but sometimes when you're hurt, you try to come from a loving place, but it comes out as if it's, a unhealthy situation in other words so I say all that to say that um, you know I came from a loving place and it got to the point that I felt like I need to put up walls I felt like I need to put up shields in order to keep myself protected just from dealing with certain people out here in this world because it's just like you know oh my god like people are just like ruthless is what I thought so I knew my mindset wasn't like that so I knew immediately after being hurt like you know, by different people, you know, by uh, just seeing how people manipulate and just seeing how people try to cross people's boundaries. And those are things that I don't do. And those are things that I don't like. And that's what I dislike about people because I don't like dishonesty. I don't like, you know, people who don't have integrity. Um, and I'm not going to say I don't like them. I just choose not to want to be around them. You know, I, I, I don't like, you know, being around people who manipulate and try to take advantage of other people i don't like being around people who can't be honest and express their true feelings and emotions you know i can express my true feelings and emotions to you know people out here but it's just that now it's just gotten to the point that divine spirit of light has shown me how to um hold space for people without giving without giving them everything up front in other words so i say all that to say it's like a balance having a healthy balance in other words like I am able to see people for who they really are before I actually start to really, you know, uh, before I really start to really open myself up to, you know, just any and everybody as an example. So with all that being said, the person on the left side of the room near the stairs when I walked in, they were just a representation of just individual different personalities of yourself that is that you have almost like you know how Beyonce say she she has her alter ego which is Sasha Fierce or whatever well in some sort of way we all kind of have created in some sort of way down you know within our um subconscious mind we've all kind of created you know and I've, I've done this too in the past you know before actually healing myself or whatever but we create these characters that help keep us safe so remember the security guard that was down at the bottom of the stairs he was there to help keep them safe in some sort of way so he was there to let's just say show up if somebody try to come in and do something you know like i said if somebody come in as an example if somebody comes in and tries to cross my boundaries well then the security guard shows up you know the security guard is like a representation of when i told you i had to approach my neighbor in a sense you know because she was violating she was spiritually violating you know myself and trying to violate you know uh cross boundaries and whatever and i had to let her know because she didn't know that i knew but i had to let her know i see you and i need you to stop in other words so i say all that to say that's like the security guard type energy that was showing up in the dream and then when we went to the room over to the right when i said my cousin was there and he was in denial well that denial part is a representation of some of us like how sometimes we can be in denial of stuff, you know, like we don't express our true authentic self. We're in denial because we know maybe let's just say certain people or certain things in our lives or, you know, I can't, I, and, and let me say this, I kind of got the feeling like, because I remember what the cousin who was running the place said, she had told me before she rolled away. She, before she rolled away and when she was outside, she actually told me, she said, yeah, I created this safe place for each and every one of them so that way that my relatives don't have to be wandering out here while they're trying to recover from uh addictions is what she said so i say all that to say um in some sort of way you guys have created in your mind whether it's from your childhood or whether it's from just past lives you know because when i say that you know I know sometimes that some of this is hard to understand because I know for me, I was like, oh shit, like really, really? Okay, but anyway, so I say all that to say some memories and some things we do are from just our childhood. In other words, we built up defense mechanisms from our childhood. Some situations are things that we've done from our past life that, you know, um, 
that is imprinted in our DNA and that is still stuck there in our subconscious mind, in other words. So in other words, that this body that I'm in, when I leave this earth, this body is gonna be here. But when I get reincarnated again, I'm gonna find myself in another vessel, another body type. It will not be the same body type, in other words. So I say all that to say, um, but your soul memory your DNA, all that stuff stays in that, all, all that trauma, drama, emotional stuff, physical stuff, physical pain, ailments, and all that, all that stuff stays bottled up within that DNA system until now is the time for it to come up so that it can be trying to, so they can be trying to healed and to be dealt with. So I say all that to say that, um, I had to understand that a lot of things like in my life, in other words, like, be, you know, just things that I have created, which are things that you guys have created as well, you know, um, things that you guys have created, because again, it was coming either from your childhood, um, things that was learned from your, just your family in itself, your generational, um, whether it be from society, just, just things that we've learned, you know, and honestly, if you can see yourself in so many different lifetimes, you... God is not going to allow us to go back too far in, in our memories, you know, um, at least he don't want to show us too much of the bad stuff because he don't want us to get so stuck there. But, you know, he will kind of, at least that's what he showed me. He showed me things where I needed to heal, you know, because of what was going place, like, let's just say in this lifetime, as well as like, let's just say with my mom, with my sister, with my kids, with my, um, husband should I say you know all those things I've had situations where God was just revealing so many different things from different lifetimes that I was dealing with with so many different people and even people that I just come in with everyday contact you know which is so funny because even the guy at my dentist office I was even able to see him you know right before I started that dentist office God had actually showed me my past life you know dealing with um when I say dealing with him I don't mean like in a relationship but just a past of what he's correcting in this lifetime, you know, um, just, yeah, just things that he's correcting in this lifetime. I was like, oh, wow, okay. But, um, you know, and then even another situation where he actually showed me a path, past life where just certain people that crossed my path, you know, he shows me some of their past life and my dealings with these people, should I say. But anyway, I say all that to say, um, you know, some of us, I mean, some of you guys have been, um, having these different representations of people who was there in that rave room is a different representation of yourself. So I say all that to say those are things that you have created um, because it was to help you to be able to manage throughout life, to help you to get through any childhood trauma or emotional drama that you may have to deal with. And those are just things that we create, you know. Um, again, think about Beyonce, as she, as she say, she called herself Sasha Fierce. That helps her to get into a, a fierce mentality, you know. Uh, and then when you see Beyonce outside of that fierce mentality, it's almost like she, it, it's almost like she's childlike. So I say all that to say, um, you know, the uh, different people. But I, I got the feeling like, you know, they had some sort of addictions or whatever. And again. Because that's what she said anyway. But anyway, let me get to the point. So what I'm saying is even the baby that was there was a representation of, you know, each and every, you know, your childhood, the people, um, each and every person and how, uh, each and every person and how, how they played like a significant role in your subconscious mind, you know, different stages. Thank you, spirit, different stages of your life. You know, if you someone who had like addictions in some sort of way, if you were somebody who was just. Uh, just a looker and when I say looker I mean like somebody who was just uh, constantly staring or mesmerized with people and you feel the need to just look and stare because that's what the cousin was doing when he was just standing and he wanted to introduce himself or whatever so I have to say him too because you know he played a part too but then you also had um you know, you also had the cousin who was in denial at being on drugs. Then you had the security guard that was there. Then you had the baby that was there that was crying, you know, emotionally for no for no particular reason. I was just picking the baby up to just say hi. 
and the baby didn't want me to touch it so I put the baby back down and then even the lady who was my cousin who was supposed to be running a place her job was to basically keep everybody protected is what I got because she said she created this space for each and every one of them think about that she created a space for each and every one of those characters to keep them safe so that they weren't wandering out here in this world in other words so that they can have a safe place while they was going through their their healing addictions is what she said so anyway as we got outside and um, we saw her rowing away, should I say, that to me was just a representation of, because water, like I said, she was on like a, excuse me, she was on a lake shore and, not a lake, she was like near some sort of shore of water and I just saw her rowing away. Water is a representation of cleansing and purifying and um, also uh, cleansing of emotions um, so anyway, with her rowing away, that was just letting me know she's at that point in her life where she's just ready to let go. She's tired of protecting. She's tired of, tired of protecting, tired of taking care of, and tired of, uh, kind of like just abandoning her post, in other words, like tired of caring for everybody. So in other words, it's almost like some of you guys are going to find yourself to this point that you're just like enough is enough. Like you've been, you held on to the energy long enough. Now it's time to uh, release it and let it go. <sighs> I know that was kind of long, bear with me. But anyway, I hope that information was helpful for you guys. So just to let you know that it's coming. Um, if it's not already here and um yeah, and the only thing I can tell you guys is just make sure you, you got to make sure that you only, only, you got to make sure that you surround yourself around positive people. When I say positive people, I don't mean everything has to be positive because some things are just what it is, you know, not so positive to the point that you just not recognizing that there are issues that don't need to be dealt with. But again, it's that balance. So, uh... You just gotta, what I'm hearing spirit say, you just gotta make sure you surround yourself around the right people, especially during your healing process, you know? Um, especially during your healing process, because healing process. So one thing that you need to understand, thank you spirit, one thing I'm hearing too is, um, you know how the Bible talks about generational curses? Well, the curse has been broken. The curse is broken. The curse has been broken. So we're no longer under that generational curse, but... Just think about it. If something has been cursed at some point in time, just know that there's a healing process that does need to take place after the curse has been broken. So in other words, this is the energy that we in right now. Curses have been broken. Curses are broken. So it's a matter of now God is just trying to heal those wounds of where the curses took place. So it's no more putting band-aids on it. It's a matter of doing the work and... Um, healing the trauma, healing the drama. So anyway, I hope that information was helpful, y'all. I need to get home so I can finish doing what it is I need to do, but um, just keep that in mind and uh, think about it. So, and, and, and let me say this, thank you, Spirit. Don't ever feel like it's, let me just say this. The, the more you take time for yourself and sit in that quiet place, the more time you allow you be able to see so much quicker. And it's not about rushing the process, but the longer it takes you to address that, the longer it's going to allow you to be on this journey, should I say. But the more you acknowledge, thank you, Spirit, the more, e thank you. So you don't have to be so holy or so spiritual on this journey in order to just please God. Remember I said yesterday, even if you just have the faith of a mustard seed, just saying, God, I surrender. I am ready to heal. I am ready to deal with whatever it is that I cannot see. You know, because one thing about me, I told you about, I've always said, God, allow, search my heart and allow me to be able to see the things that is hidden way deep down in my heart that I didn't know about. You know, and this was years ago, which is so funny because this is like right before we actually moved down to where I'm living at now, um, and uh, this was almost 11 years ago, 12 years? I think it's 12 years this year. 12 years ago, I, I just started asking God, if there's something buried deep down in my heart, just allow me to be able to see it, deal with it, you know, um, and, and just heal it. Because me, for me, 
I like to address issues, even though they may be hard, I like to address issues head on so I can just be done with that shit. You know, that's just me, you know, because I don't like lingering stuff out, holding on to stuff. I just like to heal, figure it out and move on to whatever the next task is. I don't like sitting in the same spot, doing the same old stuff, feeling like year after year, I'm still doing the same stuff, feel like I'm stuck in the same place and feel like I am, um, like I haven't grown uh evolved grown or whatever the case may be you know so i say all that to say um i just wish you all much love and much light on your journey and hopefully you will just decide to release it and let it go um trust me when i tell you it's freeing it's liberating and uh it really is it's gonna be like a, a sense of running and clicking your heels together you'd be like oh my god this is all i had to do and when you do it it's just gonna be like damn i wish i would have did that shit a long time ago <laughs> so anyway with all that being said i hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day i wish you all much love much light and i say peace and blessings to next time and make sure you remember to always keep god first and know that you have a spiritual team that is around you and know that your higher self is leading you and guiding you as a matter of fact your higher self is what's helping you to dig way deep down into that subconscious mind uh, um, because your soul wants you to heal you know your soul wants you to heal and it's almost like your soul is kind of taking over so where whereas your soul will sit back and allow you to drive it first now it's like uh-uh you need to move out the way because now i'm taking over the wheel so that's exactly what people are experiencing right now so you know and just know that the more that you fight it the more that you just frustrate yourself and you make the energies more intense but if you just learn to go with the flow as i said before god said to just go with the flow and um expect the unexpected that's all i can say but if you just go with the flow you just find yourself ha you're able to deal with the energies a little better anyway y'all y'all stay blessed and um remember to always keep god first and always be grateful more than importantly because god is allowing you guys like a, a second opportunity you know Whereas before, I know some of y'all was disobedient at one point, and God's like, okay, you want to be disobedient? Okay, so let me so start flattening some ties. Let me cause this to happen. Your car's not working, or let me let me call this to happen. Accidents to happen. Okay, you still don't want to listen? You still didn't get the picture yet? Okay, well, let me allow this to happen then. Maybe you'll get the picture. Okay, you want to be nasty to this person? Okay, well, let me allow this person to be nasty to you. So I say all that to say that um, he's just trying to get you to just change your mindset and have a different perspective on things um you know everybody is going to get to a point of coming to we have to go through this whole spiritual journey like this in order to come to a realization of bringing us back to what true unconditional love is we're not only having to do it but the rest of society is going to do it it's just it's going to be done in waves you know um, everybody's not going to be where we at at this particular moment but again it's like some people are here some are here some are here and then when these people walk out and graduate there's going to be another wave of people coming too you know <clears throat> it's just like things come in layers so anyway y'all stay blessed stay sweet and remember always keep god first and know that you got um Oh, let me say this too so even if you are sitting alone and sitting in silence you're not by yourself just know that you got your guys and you know your ancestors and, and of course god is always there listening so um you know your angels are there as well too so you know when you get in silence you'd be surprised at what you hear what you may see you know what